Welcome to ECLIMU Learning Simplified. In the previous lesson, we discussed two applications of pressure, that is the siphon and the bicycle pump. In this lesson, we are going to discuss three other applications of pressure, that is a syringe, force pump, and a lift pump. My name is Albert. I hope you'll enjoy the lesson. So by the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to explain the working of a syringe, the working of a force pump, and then the working of a lift pump. And then also, I will expect you to give me the differences between these two, the force pump differences between a force pump and a lift pump. And then of course, you are going to give me all to explain which one is more efficient and which one is uh, less efficient. So the first application here is a syringe, and a syringe uh, is operated using the idea of atmospheric pressure and the pressure difference. What happens before you use a syringe, you must make sure that there is no space which is left inside. Before you use a syringe, you make sure that piston and the valve are like this. This one this piston must be there at that point before you use this syringe. Now, when you put it inside this liquid and you pull, or you do what we call an upstroke, this is what we call upstroke. When you do an upstroke, you will create an empty space inside there because there was no air inside. So when you pull up, you will leave an empty space there. So inside this barrel, there will be low pressure during upstroke. There will be low pressure because you have created an empty space there. So pressure inside here will be low. Then pressure outside here, atmospheric pressure, atmospheric pressure will be very high from outside. Now due to pressure difference, high pressure outside, low pressure inside, this liquid will be forced from where we have low pressure to where we have high, uh, from where we have high pressure to where we have low pressure inside. Now, when you want to now to eject or to, to release this uh, uh, liquid, you do what we call downstroke. So during downstroke, now you will be compressing this liquid which is inside. Remember, when you are compressing it, you are using an external force. You will create some pressure at this point. That pressure will push this liquid uh, or will generate a lot of pressure inside the liquid. And there will be high pressure inside than atmospheric pressure outside. Now the liquid will move from where we have high pressure inside to where we have low pressure outside. So that is how a, a, a syringe works. You make, you make sure it is empty at the beginning. You put it inside a liquid. You pull up or you do upstroke. When upstroke is taking place, you create low pressure inside. Atmospheric pressure from outside will be very high. It will cause the liquid to move in. When you want to eject the liquid from inside, you do a downstroke. You will create high pressure inside. It will make the liquid to move from where we have high pressure inside to where we have low pressure outside. So the second one in this case is a, a lift pump. And a lift pump has specific parts. One, we have a plugger. Then where we are going to do our upstrokes and downstrokes by holding this lever. Then we have a spout where the liquid is going to move out. We have valve P. This is a valve. And then this is a valve Q. Valve Q. Then we have uh, the space between valve P and valve Q, of course. And then now before you use this pump, the first thing you do, you must fill the water above uh, valve P. So this space here, this one here, you must first fill it with water. The reason why you are going to fill it with water is to close this valve P. You fill this uh, space above with water so that it can be able to close valve a P. Closing valve P is going to help us to fill the liquid between valve P and Q. Now, during upstroke, when you are doing your upstroke, this valve P will close. It will close due to the weight. It will close to, due to the weight of this liquid, which is above it. It will close due to this weight of the liquid above it. And when it's it has closed, the space between P and Q will expand. It will have a very large volume. And you see it is only air which is there. So that space will expand to have a large volume. And when there is large volume between here, it means now 
pressure of this gas will be very low because when a gas is not compressed, it has a very low pressure. So here we will have low pressure. This valve P, remember, is closed. Here we have low pressure. Now we will have high atmospheric pressure from outside. This high atmospheric pressure from outside will force this liquid to push this valve Q to open because there is low pressure above it. Q will open, water will enter inside. So that is during upstroke. During upstroke or before you operate the pump, you fill this uh, space up here with water so that it can close valve P. So when you do an upstroke, you create low pressure between valve P and Q since you are expanding the air inside and when you are expanding the air you are creating more more volume when volume when gases occupy more volume it means they will have low pressure so inside we will have low pressure now when we have low pressure atmospheric pressure from outside will be very high this atmospheric pressure will be very high high atmospheric pressure it will force valve q it is the atmospheric pressure which force valve q to open and the liquid from the well will come through valve Q into the space between P and Q. So during downstroke, during downstroke, you are going to compress. You are going to compress this water between valve P and Q. When you are going to compress this water, the weight of the, of the water between valve P and Q will cross. It will cross valve Q. The weight of this water will cross valve Q. Now, since you are compressing this water, it means its pressure will be very high. The pressure which is high between P and Q will force the water to move and open valve P. So the, the pressure which will be very high here, since valve Q has closed, it will force to open valve P and this water will move past valve P. The water which was above valve P will move outside the sprout. And this water which has come now will occupy the space above valve P. And then now when you are, you are going to do your upstroke again, then you are going to expand the space between P and Q. There will be low pressure. The atmospheric pressure from outside will force the water to come in. When water has come in, then when you are going to do your downstroke again, pressure inside will be very high. Valve P will be closed to open, Q will be closed by the weight of water above it, and the process will continue like that until your tank is full. Now, we are going to realize that this pump has a, a disadvantage, uh, all limitations. The first limitation is that it can only support a height of water of 10 meters. It can only raise water up to a height of 10 meters because it depends on atmospheric pressure. Remember, we said the height which at atmospheric pressure can support on a mercury is 760 millimeters of mercury, which is the same as 10 meters of water. So this pump can only support a, a height of 10 meters. So anything beyond 10 meters cannot be supported. So if you are using it at a very high uh, level or altitude above, uh, height above sea level, like where you have atmospheric pressure which is less than 5, then this pump will not be effective. Another limitation of this pump is that between these valves, valve P and valve Q, there might be a leakage. There might be a leakage in this pump, and when there's a, le a leakage in this pump, then it will not work effectively. The closing and the opening of the, of the valves will not be effective. So the second pump that we are going to look at is a force pump, and a force pump we are going to realize that is very important and it can raise liquids or water to a height of more than 10 meters. And the reason why it does that is because it has two tanks. It has the first tank that is parallel A and it has parallel B. It has two parallels, two different tanks. So these two tanks are the ones which are going to make it possible for it to raise uh, water to a height of more than 10 meters. Now, the other thing that a student should note is the parts of this pump. We have the outlet in the second tank up there. We have air inside this uh, parallel B. And this, the function of this air is going to help us to close valve B. The function of this air 
is going to help us to cross valve B. Then we have a parallel A. We have valve A, you can see it. And then there's a space between this piston and this valve A. And then, of course, we have atmospheric pressure. Now, what happens during upstroke when you do an upstroke or when you pull upwards? When you do an upstroke, this valve is going to move up and create uh, air inside here will expand. The air here, air will expand. When air expands inside there, there will be low pressure. Low pressure. Air will expand here. There will be low pressure. Now, when there is low pressure, atmospheric pressure outside here will be very high. High atmospheric pressure outside will force this valve A to open. So, high atmospheric pressure will force the valve A to open and the liquid will move through the valve into parallel A. Now, when it reaches parallel A, in that case, you are done with your upstroke. Now, during downstroke, remember, during upstroke, valve B was closed by the air above it. But now, during downstroke, this water above valve A, look at valve A where it is, this one here. The water above this valve A will, cause, will force it to close. This one will close. It will close due to water or the weight of the water above it. Now, when it closes and you are doing an, a downstroke, you are compressing this air. You are compressing not, not air but water. You are compressing the water at this parallel air, this water will be at very high pressure. So when you are compressing it, it becomes high pressure. But now, remember valve A has been closed by the weight of this water. So atmospheric pressure here is not going to help us. So this valve is already closed. Water inside it has a very high pressure. But valve B was closed due to the air which was above it. The the force or the pressure which was caused by that air is very small. So this water, which is at a very high pressure, will close or will force this valve B to open. And when valve B opens, this water now will flow to, valve, to, to parallel B. And in that case, uh, you will correct your water there. And then when you do your next upstroke, when you do your next upstroke, this, this space will expand. Pressure will be very low. When pressure is very low, the water above valve B will close valve B, or water inside parallel B will close valve B. Then atmospheric pressure here will be very high. That is the next upstroke. If this atmospheric pressure becomes very high, it will open valve A. Water will come inside parallel A. Then when it comes inside parallel A, then when you do your next downstroke, this water will be compressed. The weight of this water will close this valve, valve A. When this valve A is closed, here you will have high pressure. This water here will have low pressure because now this pressure you are using an external force. Valve B will open and the process will continue like that, like that, until your tank is full. And this one we have said it can lift water to a height of more than 10 meters. So we have some of the advantages of a force pump over a lift pump. And the first one is that it enables continuous flow of water. Remember, you have two tanks. Once the first tank has been filled, it transfers to the second tank. Someone can tap from the second tank even if you are not doing upstrokes and downstrokes in the first tank. So you can use the water in the second tank even if there's no water coming from the first tank, which is contrary to the lift pump that we saw, you must be doing an upstroke and downstroke for you to get water outside the sprout. Again, this pump can raise water to a height of more than 10 meters. This one we have discussed it. And so that marks the end of our lesson today and the end of this topic pressure. I hope you enjoyed this topic. Now in the next lesson, we are going to discuss particulate nature of matter and we're going to realize that matter is made up of very small particles which are in a continuous random motion in liquids and gases and they are at constant vibration in solids. Until then, stay tuned at ECLEMU uh, Learning Simplified.